In this big cruise news update, here where more big ships are starting to sail in Europe, the deal breakers that could stop cruisers like you wanting to cruise, why exactly is Norwegian Cruise Line Group sending seven of their ships right now from the United States to Europe? As ocean cruising opens up again, we're seeing seven big trends that the news over the last week or so has reinforced. So let's take a look at what the news is telling us about ocean cruising. First of all, it's all about Europe at this stage. We're seeing more and more countries in Europe open to cruising. So in the last week or so, we've seen Italy now joining those countries that have opened up to cruising. So we now have Norway, we have Germany, we have Greece, we have Italy and Malta opening up to cruising. So those countries where they're starting to get the virus more under control are opening up to cruising. Spain and the UK, which are two huge, big, important cruise markets, not yet budging and no signs they're likely to budge. Secondly, what we're seeing is as cruising opens, it's the European owned or those cruise lines that are part of the big corporations like Royal Caribbean and Carnival Corporation that have European focused cruise lines, actually the ones that are starting up. So what we're really seeing at the moment is the announcement by MSC Cruises, which is a European based and owned cruise line. They are the fourth biggest cruise group in the world and they have announced they will start sailing out of Italy with two itineraries and they're starting on the 16th of August with the first of those. We've also seen Costa, which is part of the Carnival Corporation, also very Italian based, announcing they will start cruising still at the time of recording, not announcing the exact date and the itineraries. And of course, as we've covered before in Germany, you've got Mein Schiff and Hapag Lloyd, which is part of a Royal Caribbean group joint venture, have started sailing. And Aida, which is part of the Carnival Corporation, announcing that they will only start sailing in September. So they've delayed the startup of their cruising. So Carnival will have two cruise lines sailing in Europe. Royal Caribbean will have, also have two of their cruise lines sailing in Europe over the next five or six weeks. In Norway, we're seeing two Norwegian-owned cruise lines, of course, Hurtigruten, which did have some issues with a COVID outbreak on their expedition ships, but they are still sailing uh, up and down the coast of Norway, and Sea Dream, which is also owned by a big Norwegian entrepreneur. So those cruise lines are sailing. So we're seeing very much European-owned or European-focused cruise lines, the ones to start up. The third critical thing that we're seeing, and I think this is really important as you look ahead at how you think you're going to be cruising again, is when cruises start up, they are brand new cruises. So as cruise lines launch again, and we've seen that for all of them, Hurtigruten, Sea Dream, Mindshift, Hapag Lloyd, and now both MSC Cruises and Costa, when they start sailing again, these are brand new itineraries, brand new cruises. So they are still canceling the scheduled cruises to make way for new tailor-made cruises that fit around the restrictions. So again, I think we're learning that when cruising starts up again, don't expect those cruises that you perhaps have booked to happen because that's not the way cruising is starting up. The fourth big thing that we're seeing, and again, the most recent announcement confirms this, is the cruises either have no ports or extremely limited ports. So we've seen, of course, before that the German cruises are all cruises to nowhere. Norway very much focused on Norwegian ports. Once MSC and Costa start, they're doing a slightly different approach because they have more countries they can cruise to. So let's take a look at what MSC are doing. So MSC are bringing on board two of their ships, so not the entire fleet, which is again a very important part of the trend. MSC Grandiosa will be having seven night cruises focusing on the Western Mediterranean, and they will be calling at ports like Genoa, uh, Cicivecchia, Rome, Naples, Palermo, and Valletta in Malta. MSC Magnifica will be also having seven night cruises focusing on the Eastern Mediterranean, and their ports will include places like Bari and Trieste in Italy, and the Greek ports of Corfu, Catacolon, and Piraeus, which is Athens. And Costa look to be doing a very similar thing. So again, we're seeing limited ports or ports which are completely focused on those countries that are open to cruising. The fifth big trend, which again is reinforced by the most recent news with MSC and Costa, is when cruising starts, it's also very focused on very specific populations. It started originally with just Norwegian and then spread to Norwegian and Dutch as Norway started. What we're seeing is a slightly different dynamic. So first of all, when the German cruisers came on board those cruises to nowhere, they were open to a kind of a travel bubble, which include Germany, Austria and Switzerland. 
Now, when MSC come on board, they're now opening all their cruises to everyone within the Schengen zone. The Schengen zone is a group of EU countries which normally don't have requirements as you pass around the borders. So there's quite a few countries involved in Schengen. So in Schengen, you have countries which include Belgium, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Germany, Estonia, Greece, Spain, France, Iceland, Italy, Latvia, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Hungary, Malta, the Netherlands, Norway, Austria, Poland, Portugal, Slovenia, Slovakia, Finland, Sweden, and Switzerland. So quite a big and diverse group of countries they can call on to join their cruises. The UK and Ireland, which are not in the Schengen zone, for example, residents from those countries cannot go on these cruises. So again, we've seen the cruises very much around travel bubbles, or in the case of Europe, a kind of existing travel group, which when borders opened, the whole Schengen opened to each other. So again, I think we're going to expect to see cruises very much focused on very specific populations, and the most recent news reinforces that. The sixth big thing, and this is the big deal breaker for many people when it comes to these cruises that are starting up, the new protocols and rules that are put in place, which I think, so we're seeing again with the most recent news, fewer passengers on board. So the capacity on MSC is going to be 70%. And we're seeing really, as all these cruises start, between 60 and 70% capacity. We're also seeing things like social distancing on board. So limits to the number of people who can go to events or be around the pool. Lots of changes to dining, where again, it's socially distanced. You have to dine with your own travel group. No self-service dining options. But one of the big issues, which for many people is a bit of a deal breaker, is around masks. So for example, the MSC protocols say that when you're indoors, you need to be wearing a mask outdoors. You only have to wear it when there are occasions where you can't socially distance. I guess there's some sort of gathering event or party of some kind. So masks are a key part of what's going on. This reflects what's happening on land. I know a lot of people are saying they really want to wait until that shifts before they start cruising, but certainly we're seeing masks, social distancing as a key, key part of these protocols. And this is being consistent as more and more lines start sailing again. Big deal breaker for many people. Another critical thing that we're seeing, and this is a bit of a change, certainly within Europe, is MSC cruises are going to be doing not only COVID-19 testing for all their crew, which is what all of the lines that have started so far are doing, but they're also going to be testing all passengers before they board the ship. Now, one of the things that I haven't been able to get a strong hold on is if you are denied boarding because you fail the test, what actually happens? In the statement that MSC have made, they talk about making sure that people get the help they need, the assistance to get home, the assistance to make sure medical help is arranged, but it doesn't specifically say what will be covered by MSC, what will be covered by the passengers and the arrangements. So that's still one big gap. And I think probably a deal breaker for many people that won't really want to understand exactly what will be happening. The next thing that we're seeing is when it comes to ports. Now, as we've seen, some cruises are cruises to nowhere. Some have very limited ports. The big, big change we're seeing is with MSC cruises. Now that they're going to be offering cruises which call on multiple countries, you're only going to be able to get off the ship in port if you're on an MSC cruise. So you can only go in that MSC cruise bubble on land in port. You can't go and self-explore. You can't do independent touring. So they can kind of control that whole bubble. And I assume that's some kind of arrangement that's made ports comfortable with letting cruise passengers on board and also to protect people from getting infected on land. So that again is a massive issue. And I've seen lots of discussion amongst groups uh, online and also when the, on my channel when I've asked people that question is the idea that you can't just get off and explore yourself again is a deal breaker for many. Shifting to another key piece of news is Norwegian Cruise Line have announced that they are moving a large number of their ships from the US to Europe. But first of all, let's take a look at what are moving. So there's five ships within the Norwegian cruise fleet, as it were, that are moving. And they include the Epic, the Spirit, the Dawn, the Encore, and the Bliss. Two Oceania cruise ships are moving and one from Regent Seven Seas. Why are they doing this? Is this because they're gonna be starting up cruising in Europe? It doesn't appear so. What they have said is a couple of reasons. Obviously, there's a bit of hurricanes coming through, hurricane season, moving those out of the way of hurricanes. Secondly, it's a way of reducing costs. Apparently, it's cheaper. It's gonna be cheaper for them to actually go into a longer layup in Europe. Also, because they are able to very easily then repatriate crew, particularly the crew that's coming to the end of their contract. At the moment in the US, it's pretty much impossible to get crew off on land and send them home. In Europe, it's easier to get people off the ship 
onto planes and back to their home country. Also, there's some discussion about whether, in fact, there's also going to be an opportunity for some of them to have maintenance because, of course, all the shipyards are in Europe. But it doesn't appear to be anything linked to the ability to start cruising in Europe. Also, in that call, when the discussion was had, Frank Del Rio, who's the CEO, also again stressed the point that when cruising starts in the US and everywhere, it is going to be very slow and very steady. A couple of ships coming on stream, probably very short cruises. And what he said very explicitly is don't expect all of, say, the Norwegian fleet to be back until at least quarter to 2021, no matter even if cruising starts, because it's going to take a while to get back on stream and have the demand, etc., to start cruising full on. So we're definitely seeing a lot of action happening in Europe as more and more cruise lines, more and more countries open to cruising. Of course, we'll keep an eye on that and hopefully it'll run a little bit more smoothly than has done in some of the cases in Norway where there's some incidents with COVID-19 breaking out and the ramifications it had. I have a whole separate video about that if you want to know more about what exactly happened. River cruising is keeps growing in Europe. There's almost around 50 river cruise ships now sailing in Europe and many of the other cruise lines on rivers will start coming into service as we head more into the end of September, October. Again, many of them are very reliant on the US traveler and with the EU borders closed, to US, it makes it very difficult for them to start sailing and filling those ships. That's the latest cruise updates and news. Remember, you keep watching out for more updates. And as important updates happen, I will keep you posted. And really importantly, what I think that means for cruising.